way that Leo goes through loser brackets is insane. Yeah, yeah. You definitely don't want to get in the way, but sometimes you don't get the pick, and of course, Cola is not going to back down as one. It looks like we got the Aegis coming out from MK Leo. It's had so, uh, quite a bit of success here with the Aegis. I mean, has been on this character for quite some bit. A little bit of back and forth here. The down air into the up smash already. Not going to take the stock, but Cola taking quite a bit of damage here. Charles, it was 20 seconds. It's been 20 seconds, and Leo was putting in so much pressure onto Cola already. But this is the back and forth that we've seen from Cola before, too, especially with the damage output that Roy has. And it's very interesting to see because Leo, ooh, the double parry into the turnaround jab. All right, Leo. We're out here. We're trying to win this tournament. Okay. Oh, he's not wasting any time. That's what I mean. Leo always me, me, uh, making sure like he can make serious business out of you. That's what T1 MK Leo is all about. Moist, I know, having a pretty busy day themselves. Cola trying to keep Moist on the board, but he's got to keep that first stock as he sees it disappear before his eyes. Yeah, and just like that, back to the Mithra here, of course. Mithra. I mean, most players not even doing crazy amount of damage with Mithra. You usually do like 20 to 30 damage, and it's usually the advantage state afterwards that's so tricky. Mithra is so fast, has one of the best dash attacks in the game, has the best initial dash, and then after that, you, you're just hunting people down with just following with their mobility into the up air or into the up tilt. What I really love here too, Charles, is the way that Leo does execute the, the bread and butter combos that we usually see. It's that, oh, coming right back in from the low ground. To be able to get that grab though, get them by the ledge. But it's about the different play styles that we see, not just from Leo with the Aegis, but also Cosmos in general. You see the swap, the down air, and oh, actually trying to go for a pretty hard read. Maybe expecting Cola to DI in in that situation, but he was DIing out. Yeah, usually in situations like that, the up air is not enough to get the stock. So you want to scoop them up with the up B and then go onto the platform and have the explosion off the platform, and that can usually get them off the top here. But uh, Cola with the DI mix up, and I mm. love the punish. Cola didn't come in with no willy-nilly punish. I'm forward smashing oh, no. you for that. Cross stage, I don't care if Pirates have here, you're done. <laughs> not the only one that's got fire on their sword. Hold up real quick. Tries to call it a jump though. Leo's not gonna give it, so he's gonna make the swap into the immediate up here to catch the landing. And of course, we're back at 0%, which means the Mithra is out here. Leo with a very simple but effective formula here. One thing I do want to point out as well is just Leo in general is always down to use the Pyra, even if it's at mid percent in neutral. And I think it's just oh, very reminiscent. Oh, oh. my goodness. Okay, saves the jump. Gets oh. another reverse one. No. Cole is able to back to uh, get back and snap to the ledge here. Oh man, if Leo had executed that just a little earlier, but he's still keeping he's literally oh. playing Cole like he's oh. a ping pong ball. He tries to get the follow-up on the platform. And I love the use of neutral B there. It's such good shield pressure, very safe. You can move as well as you're doing it. So again, here's the Pyra for the neutral. Rising aerial, six units. Heavier is going to help Pyra here, but not going to get the blazing end onto stage there. And Cola with a phenomenal punish, but you are at 103%. Hear the chants from the crowd. They're talking about Cola. They're calling his name here. Leo keeping Cola by the ledge at 120 on this last stop. Just going to call it on the downer, but the immediate retaliation to the rapid jab. Okay, not going to go down. Just going to get this corner pressure. And of course, I was going to wait for it and wait for it and wait for it. The forward tilt on the normal getup. Forward tilt from Pyra is such an incredible corner pressure tool. You can react to normal getup. It's very meaty. And it's very, like, once you hit on shield, it's like, okay, are, are you going to go for another Pyra forward tilt? Am I going to call out your jump? Even if you block that move in its space, it leaves you in such a messed up situation. So you just go for the down air, and just like that, Leo just going for the dash back. If I see normal get up, this is what I do. And then even if you miss the timing and hit their shield, you're fine. It's actually insane how much space that covers in general right there. Very Leo with the good. perfect spacing, <laughs> roll distance away from the ledge. What I also just really like in general was how he was able to not only get that mix up on the ledge to catch Cole at the very end there, but he had call out Cole a lot in the first two songs from jumping early onto the stage. That's why Cole tried to mix things up and recover low from the ledge at one point. Okay, oh my double goodness. parry. All right, Leo, I see you. It's immediately closing in that gap. Positioning is so important when it comes to ages. This is incredible, Leo. Letting Cola know, hey, you can't just swing that Nair out. Because <laughs> usually you can swing the Nair, maybe drift out on the shield and stuff, but Leo, going for these double parries and then going into a dash stack for the punish, now oh. Cola has to be so careful, but wow, holding in there, not going to get hit by the forward air. 
so close in terms of damage, but Leo edging it out here. Leo's execution out of the parry is, is insane. Even if he doesn't get too much out of it, the down tilt into the up air once again, 131. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to also try to figure out a way to mix up your landing because now these platforms are going to allow Leo to get even more aggressive. The down air is going to catch him. Such a big move. You're talking about the board, so I mean, that yeah. down air scoops you quite literally from the lip of that ledge. Oh no, okay, the double jump is oh. available here, but the dash stack. No. Oh man, tries to go for the drop zone neutral B. That's such a good option. Leo really pushing the meta of this character. We've seen, and I've talked to, with Bam a lot about Aegis because he plays them a lot, and there's yeah. so much things that he wants to see top players doing, and, and literally MK Leo is doing so much of it. Oh, there you go. Sabi coming in by the ledge. You're going to be able to get that stock here too. But it's like you said before, Leo's just playing on a different level right now. 80% on the second stock for Cola. Gets a scoop up again with the down tilts. The down tilts have just been so good for Leo too. Just not only controlling the ledge, but keeping up the pressure. Okay. Okay, we, we are pairing out here. I, I've never seen... Usually Leo is the type of player where it's like, well, my spacing is so much better than yours. I'm just going to go ahead, swing the sword, fade back, and really rely on my spacing. Now Leo, with these on-point parries on a character like Pyre and Mithra with, you know, the higher end punish game, this is looking really scary for whoever has to phase him in loser's bracket. He's playing out of rhythm in general to punish now so that way he can force his way down. The upbeat to try to catch the landing on the platform from Cola. But the fact that he's able to just reset so quick out of these parries, the spacing, the dash back, while the platforms are moving away, he repositions and gets another aerial. The spray with the uppy there, not gonna connect Cola with an amazing recovery. The tech tape, the grab, gets the air dodge, but still gets the pickup on the nair here. This is a huge opportunity for Cola, but can't catch the switch high recovery. Oh, gets the roll oh. behind into the forward smash. What a punish coming out from Cola. That was optimal. That's how it starts here for Cola, but here you go again, the gentleman's Jab coming in from Leo just real quick to clean up that stock. We got an even game on our hands right now. And so you're going to be able to have that four set to just quickly reset once again out of those strings. Yeah, Mithra's like, nah, -uh. <laughs> I can combo you, but you can't combo me. Hold up. Sorry. See you got to hit that reset, all right? Yep. You got to work for this damage. Spycola has been trying to actually be a little bit more passive when it comes to chasing down Leo. He's yeah. not sharking him as aggressively because he knows that's an option and the swap up, of course, too. Okay, there's landing there. Oh, the tech chase. Oh, if it caught him. Yeah, that move is so powerful here, but it's Leo on the ledge trap getting the jab for damage here. Ooh, is Leo going to go low here? No. I mean, we've seen Leo really oh. go for these two frames with the down air. Another jab pick up. How much damage does Leo get off this pirate jab? It's actually insane. He's been using it a lot, especially by the ledge right here. Tries to call it a jump with the up air. And I love the movement coming out from Leo as well, but it is Cola with the pick up here. Going to stand by roll. The jab and the oh. back air is going to close it out. Leo is not going up 2-0. Cola going back and forth here with MK Leo on the loser side of things. Especially at the start of that game, Charles, yeah. Leo looked so dominant, yeah. controlling the entire stage, right, right. literally swinging Cola from right to left on the, the stage. The double yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to help reposition and closing that gap, Cola's composure needs to be highlighted. At the very end, he knew exactly what he needed to get that checkmate by the ledge. Yeah and following the DI as well on that jab. Cola's like, hold up, I got something to say. It's not gonna be Leo going up 2-0. It's 1-1 here and we're on Hall of Bastion for game three. Love it, one of my favorite stages. No bias obviously here, but the grabs and you get the jump reset on that middle platform. Not a lot of space to actually mix up the landing and that's what I'm scared Ooh. about when it comes to Leo. Look at this, he has not taken a lick of damage just yet. And again, it just feels like Pyra only, or Mithra only comes out for Leo at the really early resets. And now, oh my goodness, oh, the snipe on no stage. Way. You got nowhere to go. Sniping the recovery high. Oh my goodness, the blazing end. That was disgusting. He controlled so much space. That horizontal recovery that Cola may have wanted a DI to get right back in was completely denied there with that zero to death. Okay. And he's still going. And look at this, even more damage here. And like I said, usually we see the Mithra come out for about 50% and then it's swift, switching off to the Pyra here. But we're still on the Mithra. I like that, essentially uh, using the defense of the Foresight here. Oh, the Upsmash, no pickup here. Cola needs to get this stock soon. I mean, has taken a good amount of damage, 51%. Seeing Leo jumping a lot here in this situation. Not staying grounded as much. We saw a lot of the utilization of the down tilt. But it's about trying to catch Cola here in the back air now, making the swap real quick to Pyra. Yeah, and I, I think at this point, Leo just sticks with Pyra. I mean, there, there's there's so many different ways to play this character, but we see Leo with a more Pyra-favored playstyle, and it works out so well. The double switch into the neutral air. Such a and great anti- Are you kidding me? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's so good. It's such a great anti-jungle tool. You cover your entire body, and with Pyra, the Nair actually sends straight up. And Roy doesn't have a lot of great landing tools, so that's so smart for Leo to line it up three stocks to one here on this game three. Literally had to watch that double swap and then just have to deal with it. Where are you going to go? The scoop up from the down tilt now? Immediately into these up airs. He's trying to get the back airs, trying to catch the landing real quick, but it's a damage output at these early percents that Leo excels in now, making the swap over to Pyra. Oh, no, you oh, can't get oh, away oh, with oh, that. Oh. He knew that he was going to try to catch that landing, but this is Leo that we're talking about. Dang, man, Leo was like, you think I'm going to mash? You think I'm going to mash? <laughs> I'm a reactor. <laughs> All I right? do that in the air. What I do react. Do to do? And I'm going to react to this counter and get the mass punish there. MK Leo, what a showing. The three stock, what a message. And again, I just got to say, Leo's Pyra is so impressive. I feel like Pyra gets overshadowed so much by Mithra. Obviously, Mithra, very, very strong character. But I love seeing Leo's Pyra really come out and just show how Messed up Pyra is too, they're both broken. <laughs> both of them are Talk broken. Talk to them, Charles, let them know. Let them know the problem that Pyra is because it's usually that swap up when it comes to being aggressive on the ground in that middle percentage range that Leo excels with the Pyra. Now, obviously here at early percent, we see the bread and butters coming in from Mithra, but already at 69% for Cola. Look at this. Look at the swap up that we see between the down tilts and keeping up the ledge pressure from Leo. Wow, imagine getting a down tilt on reaction on a normal getup or just, oh my goodness, the down smash off the parry and Leo is getting these down tilts and just rinse and repeating with the, oh my goodness, off the top. That was just Pyra ledge trapping. Down tilt, Pyra ledge trapping. Oh, I hit the down tilt, forward air, send off, rinse, repeat, and then down tilt into up air. Good. That was so much damage. And look at this movement with the flick shots too. My goodness, Leo. Oh, you had to wave your hands up in the air real quick. You see Cola now chasing, sharking for these up airs. Now being on battlefield, he has more of that ability to try to shark underneath these platforms. I like the empty hop into the down tilt real quick. Try to predict a jump actually around him. Not too sure if Cola is just trying to call out Leo in the air more often, but he's getting punished because, again, this is Leo. He's just waiting. He's reacting. He's got him stuck on that top platform, and he hasn't landed! Yeah. He hasn't landed! You have to go to ledge, you have to go to ledge, or you have to go for neutral air dodge if you're Roy. You have no great landing tools. You do get the jump refunded here, but the spike, you didn't have too much drift options, and Leo is going to go ahead and sink that down air 10 out of 10 times. Man. Actually insane how consistently he gets it, especially the timing that he's got on the down tilt. You see him trying to go for it again with the Pyra. Yeah, and I mean, I think the main issue is the ledge trapping. I mean, Cole's got to figure out a way to not get put in these juggle situations and then be able to reset the ledge. But you also have to be able to get off the ledge too. And Leo has just making that so hard for Cola. Still three stocks to one. This is looking so grim here. Cola needs a miracle to create a game five situation, and Leo is not oh, making no it way. a reality. Oh, he got the footstool into the rapid jab to increase the debt. He's styling at this point right now. He's going to be able to get that stock in a clean 3-0 fashion. Love the sportsmanship, but this is the energy that you see from Leo climbing through that loser's bracket. I saw the seer tag being rocked over by Cola. I'm going to say it real quick. You ain't lifting no veil out here if you're trying to contest seer in Apex. But when yeah, you have to yeah. contest MK Leo here in Smash in that loser's bracket, you are going to have a troublesome time. All I'm going to say is when I opened up my phone this morning and I saw Leo in losers, I, I was like, man, I feel so bad for everyone in Leo's path for losers bracket. Like, oh my goodness. And look at this. I mean, this is a top caliber player. Cole is one of the best players in the world. Back to back three stocks for games three and four. That is absolutely insane. And I gotta say, it felt like the main problem was the Pyra ledge trapping. Yep. And it wasn't just the Pyra ledge trapping when you can, you know, get loser stock to jab at ledge. It was Pyra ledge trapping at like 50%. Yep. Oh, down tilt, fair, down tilt, fair. Rinse, repeat, I am getting so much damage. I'm only hitting you twice, but I'm Pyra. I hit really hard and I have really active hitboxes and you want that for ledge trapping and it's so strong for those situations. Even with